Hi, I'm Koya Webb, and I will be guiding you through an Ashtanga-inspired flow. I'm a certified 500-hour Ashtanga teacher, and I trained with Carolyn Claywell in 2011, who trained directly with the founder of Ashtanga Yoga, Kay Patabi Joyce, and was authorized to teach Ashtanga Yoga in 2005. I respect the Ashtanga tradition, which is why I say Ashtanga inspired. And if you would like to follow traditional Ashtanga class, I highly suggest following my teachers, Carolyn and Laruga. I created this Ashtanga inspired flow for beginners and those who might not have enough time for the full primary series as is traditionally done. This is my own personal practice when I'm short on time or low on energy, but still want to get a great practice in. I hope you enjoy. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Inhale your arms up over your head and exhale forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway and exhale, step back to plank position. Engage your core, lower down to chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Savasana, upward facing dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha Savasana, Downward Facing Dog. Breathe here, five deep breaths. Spreading your fingers wide. Engaging your core. Engaging your thighs away from your kneecaps. Breathe. Pressing the ground away. Gaze is at the navel or between the thighs. Slowly come up high up on your tippy toes, bend your knees and step to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, hands up and overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center and down by your side. Inhale, arms up overhead, moving with the breath. Exhale, forward fold. Engage your core as you move. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, step back to plank position. Engage your core before you lower down. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. So that's our vinyasa. And you can skip the vinyasa anytime you like and just come straight to downward facing dog. And when you're here, engage your core, spread your fingers wide. Make sure the weight is in your knuckles and fingertips and not in your wrists. You can lift your left wrist and your right to make sure. Engage your core here. Press the hips back. And when you're ready, come high up on the tippy toes. Bend the knees, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold, taking your time. Inhale, all the way up, hands up and overhead. And exhale, hands to heart center and down by your side. Inhale, arms up, feel the connection to your breath and your body. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, step or hop back to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing, and take your time, downward facing. So you can add on at any time to make your practice more difficult, or you can modify at any time to make your practice easier. Make sure you're listening to your body, noticing parts of the body that are tight and loose, parts that you need to strengthen over time without judging. Just noticing. Come up high up on your tippy toes. Gaze between your hands. Step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Taking your time. Bending your knees if you need to. Inhale all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart center. And down by your side. Lean the hands up overhead. Exhale, forward fold, moving with the breath. Holding your breath between poses if you need to. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, flow through your vinyasa. Or you could step back to downward facing dog at any time. 
So notice how you can modify the practice as you need to. And don't be afraid to take those modifications any day you're not feeling that you want to do it full out. Breathing here, the most important thing is consistency. Five deep breaths as you check in with your body, pressing the ground away, engaging the core. Finding that connection. Come up high up on your tippy toes, bend your knees, step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold, take your time. Inhale, arms come all the way up and overhead. And exhale, hands to heart center and down by your side. Notice how your body feels. Now we're going to go to Sun Salutation B. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale as you float through your vinyasa. Making sure you're moving with the breath. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Breathing here. Bring the right foot forward between your hands. Inhale, the arms up and overhead. Exhale, the hands down. Step it back and flow through your vinyasa. Chaturanga, upward facing and downward facing. Step the left foot forward between your hands. Inhale, warrior one. Hands up overhead. Exhale, hands down. And flow through your vinyasa, always having an option to skip it. Noticing how your body feels. And five breaths. Downward facing dog. Breathing here. Where could you engage more? Where can you lengthen more? Where can you release your thoughts more? Finding whatever part of your body that needs your attention. Come up high up on your tippy toes. Bend your knees. Step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, arms up and overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center and down by your side, Tadasana. Inhale, chair pose, moving with the breath. Exhale, forward fold. Ride the breath as you move through your poses. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, flow through your vinyasa or skip it. You're always going to have that option. So listen to your body. Moving with the breath. You don't stay long in downward facing dog here. Go ahead and bring the right foot forward between the hands. Back heel is down. Warrior one. Exhale as you come into that chaturanga position and hold the exhale until you're ready to inhale into upward facing dog. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot comes forward. Warrior one. Back heel is down. Inhale the arms overhead. And exhale. Bring the hands down to frame the foot. Slowly lower through your chaturanga on the exhale. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha Savasana. Exhale, Adha Mukha Savasana. So breathing, noticing how you feel a connection between your body and your breath. Five breaths here at the back of your mat. Notice your gaze. Notice where you feel tension. Send to the breath wherever it needs to go. Spread the fingers wide on the mat. Engage your thighs away from your kneecaps. Lengthen the back of your legs. Come up high up on your tippy toes. Bend your knees. Step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Take your time. Bend your knees. Chair pose. Hands overhead. And exhale, Tadasana. Find your center. Let's do that again. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Taking your time here. Inhale, flat back, lengthen halfway. Exhale, flow through your vinyasa, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, urdhva mukha savasana. Exhale, adha mukha savasana. Breathing in each position. 
Step the foot forward. Inhale, warrior one. Back heel is down. Exhale, chaturanga. Slowly lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Notice the breath as you step. Exhale, step the foot forward. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, chaturanga. Again, moving with the breath. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. Five breaths. Notice how when you start to breathe and move with the breath, you feel the moving meditation, the breath, the body. You feel the connection. And here you just relax and notice. Notice the release of effort, the invitation of ease. Come up high up on your tippy toes, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, arms beside the ears. Exhale, Tadasana, hands to heart center and down by your side. Feel the connection in your body, in your mind, in your soul. Bring the hands to heart center as we prepare for the next part of your practice. Now we'll start your standing series. Starting with Padangustasana, fold forward, wrapping your peace fingers around your big toes. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to, making that heart-to-thigh connection, and lengthen by lifting the legs, lifting the hips, lengthening through the back of the legs or the hamstrings, bending the elbows, lengthening the upper body down, and tucking the chin into your chest. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale as you place your hands underneath your feet. Breathing. Noticing the spaciousness in your body. Padahastasana as you Focus on lengthening through your spine and lengthening through the back of your legs. Release your thought. Just allow your thought to release as you bend the elbows and pull yourself closer to the ground. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale as you bend the knees. Inhale as you stand up and bring the feet together to touch. Step the right foot back. Turn the right foot towards the back of the mat and the left foot at 45 degree angle. Wrap the peace fingers around your big toe, left hand towards the sky, gazing up at the thumb. Engage your core, lengthen through the front leg, pressing the weight into your back hip. Breathing here. Uttita Trikonasana. Gazing down for balance or up for a challenge. Notice where your body needs more breath. Inhale, coming up, and switch sides. Left foot is forward, back foot is at a right degree angle. Wrapping the left fingers around the left big toe, gazing up at the right hand. If you feel out of balance, you can always move your left foot more to the left and the right foot to the right. Making sure your core is engaged and you're lengthening through the spine, but also relaxing your shoulders away from the ears. Noticing the connection to your body, to your breath. Inhale, coming up. And we're going to go back to the right side. Right foot forward, left foot back. And just twist at the waist. Place the left hand on the outside of the right foot. And the right arm goes up towards the sky, gazing towards the thumb. If you like to come up onto your fingertips, or if you have a block or a book, it can help here. You can also just bend the front knee as much as you need to, to find the ground. And then slowly lengthen through the front leg. Find what feels good in your body. 
Paragita Trikonasana, the wall triangle, just breathing here. To come out, bend the front knee and just windmill to the opposite side. Left foot is forward, right leg back at a 45 degree angle, taking the right hand on the outside of the left foot and the left arm goes up towards the sky. Again, bending that front knee as much as you need to to find the ground. Also bringing in a block or a book or if you need some assistance, go ahead and grab it, but you don't need any extra props other than your body. As you gaze, as you breathe, as you lengthen, feel the strength in your body. Trust in your body. Bend into the front knee, come back to center, and slowly step to the front of your mat. Stepping back to the back of your mat, setting up for Uttita Parsvo Konasana. Extend side angle pose. Bring the right arm down inside of your foot. Left arm comes up and over the head, bending in the front knee. Breathing here. Gazing up at the hand. Noticing your breath, noticing the length. Back foot is at a 45 degree angle, lengthening through the side body. And also bring your elbow to your knee here if you need to. Switching side, right foot turns in, left foot turns out. I usually have to heel toe my left toe to the left. Optional, left elbow on the thigh, or you can bring that left hand all the way down to the ground. Right arm comes up and overhead. Lengthening through the right side body. Breathing here. Noticing the length as you gaze up towards your hand. See if you can make your body longer, rooting down through your feet, lifting, lengthening through your arms. Engage the core as you come up and parallel the feet. Going to switch sides, coming in for the twist. Go ahead and place your left elbow on the outside of your right leg. Again, you can stay up on the thigh or you can bring that left hand down to the ground. Right arm comes up and overhead. Again, gazing at the hand. Breathing here. Parivita Parsvo Kanasana. Revolve side angle. And notice where you feel the stretch. Let's switch sides. Inhale up and exhale, twist. And when you twist, twisting from the torso, moving the left foot to the left, right foot to the right if you need to, and get a good twist so that you can really get that right um, elbow on the outside of the left leg. You can stay upward or bring the hand all the way down to the ground. And then Bring that left arm up and overhead, gazing at the hand. Breathing here. And when you revolve, you're detoxing your internal organs, giving them a chance to flush out, moving the blood. Inhale, coming up. And exhale as you step to the front of your mat. Beautiful. And preparing for Prasarita Padottanasana, extended wide leg forward fold, hands on the hips and fold forward. Place your hands on the ground, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward. Make sure that your toes are facing inward and your heels are out. Your feet are parallel with your hands. And the crown of the head is towards the ground, lengthening through the neck and lengthening through the spine. Slowly bend the knees, bring the hands to the hips. Inhale, come up. Hands out to the side. Exhale, hands to the waist. Inhale, lift your head and your heart. Exhale, forward fold. This time, hands on the thighs, bringing the elbows together behind you. Relaxing the crown of the head towards the floor. See if you can lengthen through the spine. Breathing, finding stillness in the body. Noticing your body, noticing your breath. Noticing the release. Bend the knees slightly and come all the way up. 
Inhale, arms out to the side. Exhale as you clasp your hands behind your back. Inhale, lengthen and exhale. Bend the knees and fold forward. Relaxing the head, relaxing the arms. Allow the gravity to do the work here. Taking the hands closer and closer towards the ground. Engaging the core and lifting and lengthening through the back of the legs as you ground down through the heels. And again, allowing the body to stretch here, not forcing, but listening and being mindful. Bend the knees slightly as you come up, engaging the core. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale as you bring your hands out to the side and fold forward, wrapping your peace fingers around your toes, bending the elbows, crown of the head towards the floor. Breathing here. Lifting through the back of the thighs, bending the elbows as you pull the crown of the head and lengthen the back towards the ground. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Hands on the hip, bend the knees and come all the way up. Go ahead and bend the knees and step to the front of your mat. And now we're gonna step a little bit wider than hip distance apart as you step the right foot back. Place the hands behind your back, clasping opposite elbows or hands in prayer. And fold forward over the front leg, pyramid pose. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, melt the heart onto the thigh. And if the heart can't reach the thigh, go ahead and bend the front knee until you can find that connection. Breathing here, you have an option to gaze at the foot or at the shin, wherever feels most comfortable to you. See if you can square the hips towards the front foot. Now inhale, let's switch sides, right foot comes in, left foot is out. Go ahead and square the hips towards the front of the mat and exhale as you fold over the left thigh. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, melt. Find that ujjayi breath, which is the ocean breath, in and out through the nose. As you breathe, it keeps the heat in the body. Notice where your body needs more breath, more spaciousness, and breathe into wherever that is. Inhale, come all the way up. And go ahead and release the hands and step to the front of the mat. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, find your core, and take bend the right knee. Go ahead and wrap the peace fingers around the big toe and extend the right leg out in front of you. Breathing here, hand to big toe pose. Utita Hasta Padangustasana. Lengthen here as you engage the core, relax the shoulders away from the ears as you lengthen. Left hand is on the hip and slowly fold forward. Inhale, lengthen and bring the right leg to the right as you turn the head to the left. Take your time here and you might lose balance, but if you do, go ahead and come back to center. Give yourself grace. Inhale, bring that leg back to center. Exhale, fold over the thigh. Inhale, lengthen and hold that foot up. Couple pulses here. Hold, engage the core, smile, and relax down. I like to shift my hips from side to side, between sides, engage the core, bring the right left knee up, and wrap the left piece fingers around your left big toe and extend that leg out in front of you. You can always just hold on to the knee and keep it in close to the body if you'd like, if that's easier, and then slowly make your way to a straight leg. Breathing here. Inhale, lengthening as you lift up. And option to fold forward on the exhale. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale as you bring your left leg to the left and turn your head to the right. 
Notice your body shaking and see if you can calm your body with your breath. Always using the breath as you move. Finding that connection with the breath in the body. Inhale, bring your leg to center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Release the toe, point the toe, engage the core, lift. Couple poses here. Bring in the smiles. Relax the shoulders down and back. Hold and pulse, lifting the leg. And then slowly lower the leg. Again, go ahead and shift the hips from side to side. I also like to roll out my toes here. Whatever feels good in your body. Okay, now moving forward. So this pose you can do many different ways. If you want to come into tree pose, you can. Otherwise, we're going to come into lotus with the right leg, wrap the right arm behind the back, clasping the big toe and folding forward. Bending the standing leg as much as you need to and finding the place that feels good in your body. So maybe you're gazing down at the big toe, or maybe you're just holding tree pose on the right side. Wherever you're at, finding length and spaciousness in the body. If you fold it forward, bend the knee and come up, and let's switch sides. So left leg tree pose, or go ahead and bring that foot into the lotus, wrapping the left arm behind the back, to wrap around the big toe and then slowly bend the knees and fold forward. So you feel this stretch of multiple parts of your body lengthening and strengthening here. Find the place that feels most comfortable to you. If you're folding forward, lengthen and then exhale as you fold a little bit deeper. Notice where you can find spaciousness. Relax. Breathe. Trust your body. When you're ready, slowly bend your knees. Take your time and coming up one vertebra at a time. You ideally want to keep that clasp until you can come all the way up and then release the side, shifting the hips from side to side finding stillness before we move forward. Bring the feet together to touch. Inhale the arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing. Step forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, chair pose. Engage your core, gazing up at the hands. Slight bend in the knees, but make sure they aren't going over the toes. And sit back. Lengthening the spine. So Ukatasana is one of those poses that can challenge you and it can change you. Inhale, arms up overhead, straighten your legs. Exhale, forward fold. And you have an optional crow pose here. So placing your hands down, knees on your biceps, finding the crow, and then flowing through your vinyasa. Ending in downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward. Back heel is down, warrior one. Breathing here, gazing up at the palms. Back foot is at a 45 degree angle, feeling the length in your body, making sure the back heel is grounded, but you keep that bend in the front knee, and then slowly open up to warrior two. If you need to resituate your feet, go ahead and resituate your feet. Make sure the right and the left arm are parallel to the ground. Noticing the space in your body. Noticing the length and the strength in your body. Breathing here. And now let's just switch sides. So take a bend in the left knee. Right leg is 45 degree angle. Warrior one on this side. Arms up overhead. Gazing up. 
And if you can't gaze up at your hand, just gaze upwards. You always want to be mindful of how your neck and shoulders feel. So if it ever becomes too strained, just go ahead and do what's most comfortable. And now let's transition to warrior two, bend in the front knee, back foot, 45 degree angle. Breathing here, palms facing down, eyes of the elbow facing up. Notice the breath. See if you can calm the breath. In and out through the nose, bringing the breath like an ocean wave to the back of the throat. Straighten the front leg, turn the left foot in, and slowly step to the front of your mat. Bend the knees, inhale the arms up overhead, exhale the hands to heart center, and down by your side. Now we'll begin your seated poses with Dandasana. Place your hands beside your hips, feet together to touch, toes back towards your face, engage your core, pressing down through your hands, lengthening through your spine. Breathing here. Slowly bring your fingers forward and wrap your peace fingers around your big toes and fold for Paschimottanasana. Gaze is at your shins. Relaxing the head down if you need to. I like to release my neck here and just bring the top of the head down a bit or you can continue gazing at your shins. Inhale, lengthen and exhale Clasp your wrists and bring your hands around your feet or a little bit forward as far as you can go. Maybe you're just bringing your hands over your toes or maybe you're just bringing the hands down beside your legs. But just find what feels best for you here. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Maybe you're just relaxing the heart on the thighs and lengthening your legs with each breath. Lengthen. And exhale, plant the hands down, cross the ankle, and pick your hips up. And slowly lower down whenever you're ready. So this is going to be my modification. Instead of going through vinyasas, I'm going to skip the vinyasas. If you want it, you can take it. You have plenty of time. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick up. Moving right along to Purvottanasana. Press down through the hands, lifting through the heart, lifting the hips. Legs are, legs are straight. You can also come into reverse table if you like to bend the knees, if that's easier for you. Relax the head back. Breathing here. And then slowly lower the hips. Bend the knees, cross the ankles, place the hands behind, beside the hips and pick up. Hold it, engage the core, press the ground away here. Breathing, holding as long as you can or flowing through your vinyasa. And then we'll come to the next pose, Ardha Bada Padma Paschimottanasana, Half Bound Lotus. Go ahead and put the right leg into lotus. Reach around and wrap your fingers around your big toe and forward fold over the left leg. If half lotus is hard for you, you can just bring the foot into the thigh and fold forward. Again, find what feels good in your body, but eventually, if you try to get the foot on the thigh, it's going to release that la lactic acid in the leg, so you want to start trying that as soon as you're ready. Slowly, we're going to just switch sides, bend the knees, cross the ankles, hands down beside the hips, and lift up for vinyasa. Bring the left leg into half lotus, reach around the back with the left arm, wrap the fingers around the big toe and fold forward over the right leg. Flex the toes back towards the face, engage the core, lengthen and exhale as you fold. Notice the body, notice the breath, bend the knees as you need to. The practice is all about knowing what you need in your body. I'm just a guide guiding you through my own personal practice, but I'm listening to my body as well. And a lot of times our body 
just ask us to be consistent. Bend your knees, cross the ankle, and pick it up. Engaging the core, pressing the ground away, or flowing through your vinyasa if you choose. And then slowly moving on. Bring your right leg back behind you for a hurdler stretch. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, fold forward over your left thigh. Hands can be beside your legs here, or you can wrap your arms around your foot, clasping your wrists and folding forward. Wherever you're at, just breathing, just noticing the breath, noticing the body. Finding stillness in the pause. And we're just going to switch sides, cross the ankle, pick it up. If you want to lift your feet off the ground, you can too, but you don't have to. And as we switch sides, bring the left leg back behind you. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward for that hurdle stretch, melting your heart over the right thigh. Flexing the right toe back towards the face, releasing the neck, releasing the shoulders, finding stillness. Always have a fun time saying the name of this this pose, Terya Mukha Pada Paschimottanasana. It's a long one, so I just say hurdle to stretch. Breathing here. Releasing any thoughts. And slowly, when you make your way up, make sure you walk your hands back and just come easily out of the pose Bend the knees, cross the ankles, press the ground away, lift the hips up. Engage the core, maybe lift those feet if you'd like, or maybe just try. Noticing the body, noticing the breath, bringing in that vinyasa whenever you want it. Then jhanish your sasana, bend the right foot, place the foot, right foot on the left thigh, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward. Again, allowing your hands to relax wherever they relax, allowing your head to relax, and just letting your mind go. Breathing here, flexing the left foot towards the face. Bringing the breath to any part of the body that needs your attention. Slowly make your way up. Bend the knees, cross the ankles, lift the hips, maybe lift the feet, maybe float through your vinyasa. Make sure you're engaging the core, rounding the back body. Slowly, let's switch sides. Left foot into the right thigh, and allow that left knee to relax out. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, melt over the right thigh. Janus Yusasana. Relax. Flex the right foot towards the face. Breathing here. Again, noticing where you need to send the breath. Where can you lengthen? Where can you strengthen? And then where can you let go? And just allow the body to be. Inhale. Gazing up at the toes, you slowly come up, bend the knees, cross the ankles, plant the hands down, and lift up. And if you're flowing through your vinyasa, just make sure you're moving with the breath as you go through each pose. Again, the choice is yours. All right, and now we're going to bend the right knee, placing the right foot on the floor, and wrapping the right arm around the right thigh. See if you can clasp the hands or the wrist in the back and fold forward over the left thigh. Breathing here. Finding the breath, noticing the breath, the body, how it moves together. 
noticing if you can find more length, if you can go a little bit deep, deeper. Rijasana is one of my favorite poses for my shoulders. Slowly bend the knees, cross the ankles and lift up. Hold it here or float through your vinyasa. And then slowly switch side Nurichyasana on the left side, wrapping the left armpit or arm around the left thigh, seeing if you can clasp the hands in the back or you can clasp the wrist. Inhale, lengthen and exhale, melt over that right leg, bringing the right toes back towards the face, breathing here. Finding spaciousness in the body, moving the head from side to side, maybe releasing the shoulders a little bit more. What ways can you move subtly to make more space in your body? Engage this core, slowly come up, cross the ankles, plant the hands down and pick up. Hold here. Or flow through your vinyasa if you feel like, oh, I want to build a little heat. You can always add that vinyasa in at any time. Or like me, you can just, you know, have times where you're just not doing the vinyasa. Breathing here, bringing the right thigh in and placing the left arm on the outside of the right thigh. This one's a little more difficult, but see if you can get that uh, arm around, clasping the hands, gazing behind you. Go ahead and flex the left foot towards your face as you look behind you. Breathing here. Noticing that release in the shoulder, feeling that stretch, seeing if you can relax your shoulders down in a way. And we'll switch sides, cross the ankle, pick it up, hold it, engage the core, round through the upper body, just releasing that space in between the shoulders, even breathe in between the shoulders. Slowly lower down and bring the left leg in, right leg is long, and then wrap that right arm around the thigh. Clasping the hands behind you, flexing the right foot towards the face and gazing behind you again breathing into that shoulder noticing where you need more breath and you can keep the gaze soft you can even close the close the eyes once you feel comfortable again this is not a traditional ashtanga class it's just ashtanga inspired so you can listen to your body no hard rules here Bend the knees, cross the ankles, point the hands down, lift up. Hold as long as you can. And then slowly bring the feet up into Navasana, boat pose, thighs together to touch. Whatever can touch, your feet, your toes. And then slowly plant the hands down and pick it up. And then again, Navasana, squeeze the thighs, arms are straight. Engage the core, lengthen through the spine. Try not to round. I know it's hard. I still round as well. Cross the ankles, hands down, pick it up. Engage your core, forehead to knees, round the back. This is where you really see where your strength is. Legs together, fingers spread wide, lifting the legs up, thighs together. Hold, breathe, cross the ankles, plant the hands down and lift the hips. Hold here, lift the feet too if you can, and relax down. Oh, all done uh, with that part anyway. Okay, relaxing down, bring your heels to your hands and lift your hips for bridge pose. Option to stay here in bridge pose, breathing, allowing the blood flow to come to the head. 
you want to go a little bit deeper, you can come into Urva Dhanurasana, pacing the hands beside the ears and pressing up. Walking the hands toward the feet, the feet towards the hands, whatever feels comfortable. Coming up on your toes or your fingertips, just start to invite in that back bend as we get into our finishing poses here. Listen to your body. If you want another back bend, you could do another bridge or come to the top of your head. Will pose is a modification. You can always keep your hands and your feet flat or come up to your toes and your fingertips. For a more advanced version, I love to come down to my forearms and do a forearm wheel, bringing my hands to the back of my neck. That feels really good on my shoulder. Make sure you're pressing your heart through the arms, so not pinching in the low back or pressing through the low back, but really moving the weight into the upper back on those wheel poses and then relax down and if you'd like one more you can have one more go ahead and come up into the bridge or wheel and if you'd like to stand up um, to challenge yourself you can go ahead and stand up from your wheel and then drop back just taking your time moving with the breath it might take you a while to get into those drop backs but I love to do them so I thought I'd add them in since this is my practice and I usually do those no matter what because they feel good. Inhale, wrap your fingers around your big toe and exhale, fold forward for Paschimottanasana. Inhale, lengthen and exhale, melt. Feel the length in your back body and just release whatever you just did. Normally, in regular vinyasa classes, you usually don't go from a back bend to a forward fold, but in Ashtanga, we do. And it feels really good. But if it's intense for your back, you can always just lie on your back and recline down angle pose and rest here. But I, I love the forward fold, seated forward fold, Pashimottanasana feels really good here for my back. Um, and I've strengthened my back over time. I found yoga because I had a back injury and Ashtanga helped me heal that, so I'm very grateful. All right, go ahead and plant your hands down, move your hips towards your heels, and lie down on your back. Bring your knees into your chest and grab your feet for happy baby. Gently rock side to side. You can stay here or you can bring your hips up and over for halasana or plow pose. Breathing here. Bring your hands to your lower back to protect your lower back. You can stay on your toes or you can point your toes, whatever feels good in your body. Again, keeping those hands on the lower back for protection. Breathing easy, finding your center here. Option to stay in Halasana Pal Pose or you can come to shoulder stand. Bringing those feet up over the hips, hips over the shoulders. Breathing easy here. Connecting with the breath, gazing up at your toes, thighs together, toes together, knees together, hips over shoulders, feet over hips, and then slowly bend the knees for ear pressure pose, Karnapadasana. Again, hands on the lower back to protect. Go ahead and apply gentle pressure to the ears if you can. Breathing here, noticing that nice stretch in the upper back and the neck, releasing all that energy and tension. That's why I love this pose, even though it's, it's quite, it could be quite awkward, <laughs> but it feels really great in the body. Gently, slowly, go ahead and relax down. And then once you come down, go ahead and straighten your legs. Coming onto the shoulders for fish pose, coming onto the elbows, lifting the heart, relaxing the head back. Lifting the heart, putting the head on the ground. You can keep the legs straight or bend the knees. You can keep the arms down or straighten the arms and straighten the legs. Matyasana. Breathing here. Bend the knees if it gets too intense. 
keeping the head straight, tongue at the roof of the mouth, gaze on the third eye. Go ahead and place the hands on the thigh to lift up through the heart and release the pose. Very easy here. Bring the knees into the chest, cross the ankles, rock forward and back on your spine. Walk all the way up as you prepare for your headstand. This is a supported headstand here. Top of the head on the ground, clasp the fingers, back of the head against the hand, right knee into the chest, left knee into the chest. Coming up for headstand as you straighten the legs, engage the core. If you need to find a wall or place some pillows around you, make sure you do whatever you need and take your time here. It's your sasana headstand. Breathe here, engage your core. Make sure your elbows aren't sliding out. Make sure they stay. Let shoulders distance apart. Engage your core, stabilize your legs. They might want to move forward and back, but just stabilize them together. And if you want, let's come halfway down, engage your core, bring your hips over the shoulders and bringing the legs parallel to the ground. It's always like to look for the toes here. You can flex the toes, you can point the toes, you can flank the toes, but you just keep the core engaged, keep your stability. Keep grounding down through the elbows, engage the core, and slowly come up one vertebra at a time as you lift the legs back into headstand. Find your stability here. And then slowly bend the knees as you come down one inch at a time, just as slowly as you went in. Toes to the floor, knees to the floor, child's pose. Knees together. Go ahead and wrap the arms around the thighs and breathe into the shoulders here. Breathing into the shoulders, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the mind. Just relaxing everything. It's a very intense pose on the body. So knowing when to rest after something intense, it helps you do the same thing in life. And then we'll slowly take a vinyasa here, if you'd like, breathing, and then stepping to the center of your mat, sitting down for our, our final poses here. Go ahead and come into easy seat, or you can come into full lotus pose. Breathing, shoulders away from the ears, wrapping the arms around the back, you want to wrap the left arm around first, grabbing the right toe, and then wrap the right arm around, grab the left toe, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold forward. Padapatmasana, releasing the third eye to the ground. Gently closing the eyes, relaxing the mind, relaxing the body. Finding your center here. Deep inhalation and exhalation. Slowly make your way up and place your wrist on your knees and you can bring your thumb and your pointer finger together for a mudra or you can just relax your hands, whatever feels good on your body. Shoulders away from the ears, long arms, long spine. Lift your heart. Padmasana. Lotus pose. Connect with your breath. Feel your body vibrating. Feel the energy flowing through every cell of your body. In this moment, being one with spirit, bring your hands to heart center, bow your head forward, deep inhalation and exhalation. And then go ahead and lie back for Savasana. Bring your heels to the corners of your mat, feet falling out, palms facing the sky. Shoulders away from the ears, lift your heart, 
Take a deep inhale. And exhale, sigh it out. Your practice is complete. As you inhale, inhale love. And as you exhale, exhale fear. Do a body scan, starting with the head, going all the way down to the feet. Place your right hand over your heart and your left hand on top of the right. Breathe into your heart space. And then slowly, whenever you're ready, bend your knees, cross your ankle, rock from side to side. Rock over to your favorite side. And just take a moment to pause here. Visualizing yourself wrapped in clear quartz crystal to purify your body. As you press yourself up, press yourself up into a new reality that you've created for yourself. Come into easy pose. Allow the body to settle. Take a deep inhale. Bring your hands to heart center. And exhale. Bring your hands to your third eye for divine alignment and clarity of thought. Bring your hands to your lips for divine speech. May your speech be in alignment with your purpose. And bring your hands to your heart for divine right action. May your actions speak louder than your words. And so it is. Namaste.